<clears throat> hey all, not sure whether you're doing <laughs> I'll start again. Hi all, not sure anybody's going to join me this morning because it's so sunny out there. Oh, Bertie's going to join us. But I thought I'd just do a Pilates, but this is for hip mobilisation. So anybody that runs, walks a lot, stiff hips, this is for you, specific exercises to do for hips. You can break it down. You can do small sections. You don't have to do the whole class every time. You can use a band for certain exercises or you don't have to. So I'll give you the pros and the benefits as we go on as well. So let's just see how we get on. So put some music on if you want some music on in the background. And stand with your feet hip width apart. Nice and tall through the spine. The shoulders are relaxed back and down. Soften through the knees. Make sure you've got that neutral spine. So just tuck the coccyx slightly so the back is nice and long. Pour your tummy and pelvic floor in and up to a third. So you've got slight tension through the tummy which supports the back. And take some even breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Oh, is that what you think of it, is it? Mm. <laughs> Good, just release through the shoulders. Release through the neck, so take the ear to the shoulder and up. Ear to the shoulder and up. So chin to chest, gently looking up back to centre, look over the shoulder and back, so over the shoulder and back, come into calf raises up onto your toes and down, onto your toes and down, nice, one more, let's do some squats, so knees over the toes, so we're just warming up, hi Will, nice to see you, well, not see you, but know that you're on. <laughs> Say two more. Say so reach the arm over. Lengthen through the rib cage. Keep that tummy pulled in. One more. Good. So let's squat again. Four squats. Good, reach to the other side. One more. So let's do opposite arm and leg. So lift and lengthen. Open out through the chest. Lengthen through to the fingers and the toes. Squeeze into the bottom. So also lengthen through that um, hip flexor. One more to each side. Let's go for our squat back extension. So squat, back extension. So you can stay here and come onto the toes. Or if you want to, you could lengthen that leg. Hi, Sarah. I'm here. Good girl. <laughs> so two more. So you can stay here if you'd rather. One more. Nice. Walk it through. So walk through the feet. Relax off through the legs, through the hips. Oh, I'm just going to get rid of this because it's annoying me. But it's stuck in my top. Oh no, there we go. So let's do some balancing. So supporting knees soft, tummy in nice and tall. So as we're looking at the hips and mobilisation, let's circle through the leg. So your supporting knee can be soft, or obviously you can stay longer on that leg, but think about your knee over time. Try to keep the heel down, the toes nice and light. And let's circle the opposite way round. So your circles can be big or small. Think about relaxing, releasing through that hip. Good, let's take the leg out and in. So out and in. Good, forwards and back. So again, releasing off through that hip, through the hip flexor, squeezing into those glutes, 
drawing that tummy in, lengthening all the way through to the head. Nice, let's walk through the legs. Release, say the other side, supporting knee soft, tummy in nice and tall. Take that leg round in a circle. So round in a circle. Nice work. And the other way round, circle. And take that leg out and in. Good. And forwards and back. So squeeze into that bottom, try to keep the tummy in the back nice and long. Good. And relax, walk through the feet. Release off through the legs. And let's just go into a curtsy. So take the leg behind, tap or knee lift. Behind, tap or knee lift. Behind, tap or knee lift. Two more. One more. Right, there is a fly going around my room. <laughs> and let's figure of eight to open out through that hip. So if you see Bertie running around, he's chasing the fly. <laughs> <laughs> and two more. Good. So let's go to the other side. Say curtsy and lift. Say curtsy and lift. Good work. <clears throat> two more. One more. Good. So come into that figure of eight. Open out through the hip. Open out. Nice. And relax down. So walk through the feet. <clears throat> relax through the shoulders. So let's do our roll down. So inhale. Exhale. Tilt the chin. Pull the tummy in. Roll all the way down. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Release off through the back. Then inhale. Exhale. All the way back up and lengthen. So again, roll all the way down. So your roll down is easing off through the lower back, working into the hamstrings and all the way back up. So really good for runners to lengthen through those hamstrings, lengthen into the lower back. Let's come all the way back down. Let's hold it down and reach round. So just relax the arms round. Good, let's take the arms to centre. Just stay here for a minute. Try to lengthen the legs if you can, but if you can't, keep the knees soft. Bring that chest down, crown the head down. Feel the length through the hamstrings, through the bottom, into the back. Soften those knees and let's open out through one arm. Open out through the chest. And back down. So again, open out through the chest. And back down. So just hold it here for a second. Walk through the feet. Release off through those ankles. And then let's bring it all the way back up. So let's go down to the mat. All the way down. Walk the hands forwards. Bring yourself onto your tummy. And just open out into a cobra. So push your hips into the mat. Hi Millie. Relax the shoulders back and down. Open out through the chest. So let's just lengthen through those hip flexors for a minute. Come into the lower back. Morning, Barbara. And let's relax back into our child pose stretch. So bottom onto the hips. Lengthen through the arms. Let the forehead, let the chest relax down. Good. Nice work. So come down onto your fronts. So we're going to start with some swimming on our front. So we want to try and lengthen, so lengthen through the arms, lengthen through the legs. So opposite arm and leg, lift and lengthen, keep your hip pushed into the mat, lengthen through to the fingers, through to the toes. The crown of the head comes down towards the mat, the chin is tilted, you're looking down and slightly forwards. Nice. So you can stay with opposite arm and leg, 
or come into your swimming. So your swimming is where you paddle both arms and legs up and down. So think again about lengthening, drawing in through that tummy, working into the lower back for four, three, two, and relax. So we need to open out through the chest. We want to keep the chest nice and open. So we stand nice and tall. We've got a nice stance for our running. So take your hands out, palms down, elbows at right angles, forehead down to the floor. Keep your legs on the floor. Lift your head, neck and shoulders off the floor. Lengthen forwards, back and down. So keep your chin tucked, lifting your head, neck and shoulders off the floor, coming back down. So you're here, lifting, lengthening, back and down. So you're opening out through the chest, strengthening through the upper, the mid section of the back. Good, let's do two more nice can we add the legs so remember if it's too much to add the legs you can do one leg at a time so lift one or both legs off the floor lengthen back and down lift lengthen back and down remember if you don't want to lengthen you could stay here just lift in and lower in. Always think about how it feels for you through your back. Always keep your chin tucked. You're looking down and slightly forward so the neck is relaxed. Let's just do one more here. Nice. So come up into your cat stretch. So come onto your hands and your knees. Tuck your chin. Lengthen through the back. Open out through the shoulders. Hello, you back again. Did you catch the fly? No? Okay. And let the tummy sink, look forwards. Lengthen through that lower back. And again, pull up and in. Open out through the shoulders, good boy. And sink. And one more, lengthen, open out. And sink. So relax back into your child. Pose, stretch. So lengthen back into your child pose, stretch. Bottom on your heels. Now, if you can, open out through the knees to increase that pelvis to open out. If you struggle, keep your knees together. So bring in the chest down, bring in the forehead down, lengthen through the arms. And take both arms round to the side. So remember when you're doing these exercises, if you're ever doing them by yourself, you can stretch for as long as you want to, come back to centre, go to the other side. You can do more on your back, so you could do more of the swimming, more of the swan dive. You can work at your own level, but I do between 6 and 12 reps of each. So come back to centre. Good. Come to your hands and your knees. So we want to stabilise the hips. So bring the hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. Draw your tummy in, tuck the chin. So your back is nice and long like a table. You've got spirit levels on your shoulders and on your hips. So we're going to do opposite arm and leg, lifting and lengthening. But as you lift and lengthen, everything is staying straight. So your hips are not tilting. So if I come this way to show you, you want to stay nice and long. The hips are staying long. If you lift too high or lift out, you're going to do this. Okay, so that is your hip coming out of alignment. Keep long. So you're lengthening. You're using the glute to stabilise you. You're keeping the back nice and long and the tummy is in. So it's for hip stabilisation, for core work. Good. So let's just do two more to each side. Good. 
and come down again relax back into that child pose stretch so open out through the knees as much as you are able to and relax back down into that child pose stretch good so we're going to come onto our sides for some leg kicks now if you wanted to work a bit harder or as you go through this and you want to strengthen slightly more you could use a band but i'm not going to use a band today but if you wanted to you could so lie in either on your elbow or with your ear on your arm or if you've got a block because you've got bad necks take your ear onto your arm bend your lower leg now pull your tummy in and your hips are stacked so your hips are on top of each other open out through the chest so you're nice and long through the back the chin is up away from your chest all we're going to do is flex your foot and just lift up and down so you could if you wanted to point the foot to lift you could flex to lower so you could point to lift flex to lower so we're working through the calf as we flex you're working through the whole leg through the hip through the bottom through the thigh working into the abs because you're putting them in and into the back good so let's just do two more here now i want you to hold your foot off the floor flex the foot if you can but if you can't just relax through the foot we're going to kick forwards and back now as you come forward you are keeping that hip still you are keeping the back long and as you go back you are keeping that back long tummy in so we are not moving the shoulders we are not doing this everything is tight you are stretching forwards and back so forwards and back so this is giving us pelvis stabilization so obviously that's really important as you run or if you're power walking you want to keep that pelvis stable so as you can run in a nice alignment you're strengthening through the glutes so we're strengthening this the bottom let's do a double kick as we come forward so come forwards and do double kick so come forwards and do a double kick nice double kick Woohoo. let's just do two more so keep that tummy in one more nice so hold we're going to leg circle so again this is looking at the hip mobilization of the hip you can point the toe you could flex the foot do whatever feels right for you but keep that tummy in the back is nice and long Hoo-hoo. and let's go the other way round so circle the other way round good and relax bring that leg forwards so you're stretching through the glutes through the bottom into that thigh to give it a rest lengthen your bottom leg now flex your foot if you can but if you can't just put the foot to where you feel most comfortable so we're engaging each muscle through that leg lift that bottom leg off the floor and just do baby pulses so again remember with these exercises you can do as many as you want to with the leg lifting the kicking forwards again do six to twelve of each set this pulsing i would say do between 16 to 32 okay so you're strengthening through that inner thigh lengthen good so let's release hug both knees in have a rest so let's do oyster so again we're looking at opening out through this hip strengthening into the glute into the back feet together open that top knee squeeze into the bottom keep the tummy in hips square and back down so you're opening out and back down you could if you wanted to you could make it harder by lifting the feet off the floor so you're opening opening you can keep the feet on the floor nice 
So I would do eight to 12 of these, just to open out through the hip. Nice work, have a rest. So we're just gonna again look at the chest because obviously we wanna stay nice and long, nice and open through the chest as you run. So we're just gonna do some arm openers. So if you've got a pillow or a cushion, or a Pilates block that you can put under your head, place it under your head. So we're gonna take the knees and bend the knees. You're gonna take your arms out in front, keep your hips facing forward, and just open your arm all the way out to open out through the um, chest, through the shoulder, and back. So you might not be able to get your hand all the way to the floor. That will mean you've got a tightness through your chest, all through the shoulder. Hello Bertie, I'm not sure you can do this move. Good boy. Good. So you're opening out and back down. So you're opening through the chest, working through the shoulder down into the arm. So again, I would do eight to 12 of these depending on how you feel. So make your next one your last one. And then when you're ready, come over to your backs. So lie on your backs. So you are comfortable on your back. And let's think about our alignment when we're led on our back. So you want to have your back flat or in neutral position. So if you've got bad backs, I want you just to flatten your back to the mat. If you can find neutral spine, it's where you tilt the pelvis. Imagine a marble in your tummy and the marble should stay in the centre of your tummy. So you're not arching off the mat, but you're not dead flat. So either flat or neutral position. Lengthen through to the top of the head. Relax your shoulders back and down so your shoulder blades are flat against the mat. Pull your tummy and pelvic floor in and up to a third. So again, you've got tension on that tummy and that pelvic floor. Take some even breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. So we're gonna start with 100 position, our basic Pilates position. So knees up over the hips, head, neck and shoulders down or up, beat your arms up and down. So you're inhaling for five and exhaling for five. So if you want to work harder, you can lengthen those legs to the ceiling, draw the toes back towards the nose, or you can lower the legs down an inch at a time. Now remember, it's your level. So even if bringing both knees up is too much, you could have one or both legs on the floor, you could be here. If you've got bad necks, please think about your necks. You could keep your heads down, you could have it on the floor, you could use a cushion if you're at home, a pillow, make sure that you're comfortable. So you're beating those arms up and down to build core strength. We're working on stamina and coordination. So we're gonna do four more. Three, two, and relax. So have a rest, either hug the knees in or feel free to go to full body stretch, however you want to stretch. Good. So feet back to the floor, lift the legs to tabletop, head, neck and shoulders down or up. So we're going to do um, knee folds. So again, working through the hip. If you've got bad hips, or tightness, you can keep your feet on the floor. Keep one knee facing the ceiling, take your other knee out to the side, and lift back up. So take your knee out to the side, and lift back up. See if you've got the same amount of movement through each side of the pelvis. You might find you've got one side tighter than the other. You might find you can go lower one side or the other. So this side I can take down, this side I'm tighter, I can't get it all the way down. So maybe if you've got a tight side, you might wanna work that side slightly more. And again, you could do maybe eight to 12 on each side. So do a couple more to each side here and really concentrate on turning that knee out to the floor. 
And then when you finish, relax. Good. So the next move we're gonna do is one leg stretch. So again, we're looking at working through the hips, the core, the back. So you lift the legs to your tabletop, head, neck and shoulders up or down, one leg stretch, draw one knee in, lengthen the other leg out. So you can reach down to the shin, or you could reach down to the ankle of the bent leg. It's your choice where you work to, it's your level. If this is too much for you, but you want to work through the hip, keep the feet on the floor and just lengthen the leg along the floor as though you've got a marble under your um, heel. So it's your level, your choice. You can be here. Good. So we're really strengthening the hip flexors and the core and lengthening through the hamstrings. So let's do four, three, two, and relax. So have a rest. Good. So again, your choice how many you do, it's up to you when you're doing your own workouts. And obviously you can pick and choose what exercises you want to do on what day. So let's do scissors, so for the hamstrings. So again, if you've got tight hips, bad backs, tight hamstrings, one leg up and down. So you could do between maybe eight to 20 on each leg, or you could scissor here. Now, if you're doing here, make sure that you reach above or below your knee. You're not locking out through your knee. You're lengthening as much as you can to the foot. So you're really getting a nice long length down the back of the hamstring through the bottom, into the back, but you're not locking out through your knee. So you're working at your own level. Good. Let's, if you're doing one leg, please make sure that you've changed. If you're doing both legs, let's just do four, three, two, and release. So relax, hug those knees in, relax off. Remember if you ever want, if it gets too much, you could take the knees side to side. You could open out through the hips, through the knees here. Nice release through the pelvis. Make sure that you stretch how you feel most comfortable stretching all the time. So leg circles. Now leg circles is a really good one for runners and to stabilize through the pelvis. So you could use a band for this one. I'll demonstrate both ways. So I'll start without the band. So you've got one knee bent, one knee lengthened. So we're just gonna circle this leg round. Now your circles can be small or they can be big. But what you don't want is any movement here. So if you're doing this, okay, that is not stabilizing through your hip. This knee needs to stay perfectly still to get that stabilization through your pelvis. If you wanted to use a band, you would just hold your band into the chest and you would circle the leg right here, which obviously gives you more resistance through the leg. So it's your choice. Let's circle the opposite way round. So you might find that by circling one way round, it's easier than the other, but we're working on that core and hip stabilization. And again, I'd probably do eight to 12 each way round. So let's change legs. Lift the other leg and circle. Head, neck and shoulders up or down. Remember to think about your necks all the time. Nice work. Woohoo. Let's go the other way round. So think about keeping that knee as still as you can. You often find if you run or even if you walk a lot that the hips are quite unstable. So if you can stabilise them, you'll get much better form. And one more. And release. So again, relax. 
You could take those feet together, let the knees open out if you want to. Open out through the pelvis, open out through the hips. Good. Now I'm hoping you can remember what side you did on the legs because we're going to the other side. Normally I do it one after the other, but I thought I'd confuse you all today. So come to your side, whichever side you weren't on last time. If you want a pillow under your head, have a pillow. If you want to use a band, you can, but you don't have to. So come down to the elbow or come down to your sides. Lengthen through that leg, draw that tummy in so the back is nice and long. And think about opening out through the chest, relaxing the shoulders back and down. So we're just lifting this foot up and down. So you could flex, point and flex. You could just let the foot release how you feel most comfortable. Think about working down through that leg, through the core, through into the back. Nice. So again, you might find you've got one side that's easier to do than the other, and that's fine. You can do more on the leg, on the side that needs work. So you can try and stabilize yourself out. Good. Let's do two more. So hold that leg and let's kick forward and back. So again, keep that tummy in, keep the back long. So we're not doing this, okay? That's not gonna achieve anything, it's not helping. Draw that tummy in, open out, kick forwards and back. Remember, we're trying to strengthen through this glute, strengthen and lengthen through the hamstrings, through the abs, through the back. Let's do that double pulse on the end. So double pulse, double pulse. Good, good. Nice. So two more here. So let's circle that leg round, so circle. Draw those tummies in, circle, hoo hoo. Good work. And let's circle the other way round. So again, if you're doing it by yourself, you could do this side one after the other so you don't get confused. Good, release, bring that leg forward, relax. Lengthen that bottom leg, so stretch, lengthen through the glutes, down for that leg, lift that bottom leg, flex if you can, and pulse, and pulse, and pulse. Good, draw the tummy in if you can. Think about always working through the core, through the side, through the back, keep that chest open, shoulders back. So again, on this one, you are doing between about 10 to 32 um, reps. Do a few more, nice. And release, hug those knees in. Keep the hips forwards. Let's open out through that hip in your oyster. So feet are together. You're keeping the hips nice and square. You're squeezing into the bottom and down. If you want to work harder, you're lifting those feet off the floor, opening out here. It's totally your choice. You can stay wherever you feel most comfortable. Nice. Hoo -hoo. Let's do a couple more. and relax. So come down onto your pillow, your cushion, your block. Take your arms out. 
Keep those hips facing forwards. Bend your knees and open out through the chest, through the arm, and down. So open out and down. So again, as you do this, think about whether you've got one side that's um, you're able to open out more, you can lengthen and stretch more. And if you've got one side that is tighter, then try to do that side slightly more to try and even yourself out because we're all going to have one side that is better than the other. So breathe through your move as you open out. Breathe in all the time. Do a couple more. Good. And then have a little rest. So just have a little rest. Good. So just come back onto your back. So I just want you to do a shoulder bridge just to release off through each vertebrae to work through the glutes and the hamstrings a little bit. So we're just going to do a nice easy shoulder bridge with both feet on the floor, knees bent, lengthen through to the top of the head, tilt, lift your bottom off the floor, come up vertebrae by vertebrae to your shoulders. Now only if you can and want to take the arms back over the top of the head. And then let the arms come all the way back down and bring your bridge down vertebrae by vertebrae. Let your bottom sink into the mat. So you're going to get that arch through your back to work through the entire pelvis before coming all the way back up. So I want you to come to the shoulder blades and then as you come down, I want you to let your bottom sink and take that back into an arch, but only as much as you feel comfortable. So the reason is that I want you to really work through your entire pelvis to keep that pelvis nice and movable. So make sure that you're really working at your own level. You're thinking about coming up vertebrae by vertebrae as though you're lifting um, links of a chain off the floor. And as you go back down, you are indenting each vertebrae to leave an imprint. So your knees are facing the ceiling, your feet are flat to the floor. Good. So just do a couple more for me here. Nice work. And when you finish, you can hug the knees in, you can let the knees go side to side, you could take the feet together, let your knees go out, do whatever you want to for a minute just to release off through the pelvis, through the hips. Nearly there. Good morning, Judy. Nice. So bring yourself to sitting. So we'll finish with some nice sitting exercises. So make sure that you are sat how you feel comfortable on your mat. If you struggle to sit up tall, sit yourself again on a on something that's um, firm, so a firm cushion, or if you're lucky enough to have a Pilates block, sit on a Pilates block. And then make sure that you are comfortable um, on your block. So we're just gonna do a spine twist for a bit of flexibility through the back. So take one hand on top of the other, let the shoulders relax back and down, lengthen through to the top of the head and imagine a pole going all the way down through the neck and the spine. Inhale, exhale, twist round to one side. And then inhale, exhale back to centre. So inhale, exhale all the way round and back. So we're increasing flexibility. And again, because the hips, the pelvis is staying still, we're increasing stability around the pelvis. Good. Let's come back to centre. Change your top hand and twist the other way first. Good. So again, as we twist and do things, we'll have a dominant side. You'll always want to go to the same way first. So let's try and every time we do something, we'll start one side and we'll always try and go to the other side first as well. So come back to centre, lengthen. Open out for that rib cage. Nearly there, you're working really hard. It's a nice sunny day out there as well. I'm impressed to see so many of you here. Open out, lengthen. Nice. And relax. So take the legs out. 
So we're gonna do our saw. So again, if you struggle here, a block may help. You could bring the legs in closer, you can soften through the knees. Think about how you feel through the hamstrings, through the back. Open out through the arms, twist, three saws over your little toe. Open out nice and tall, twist, three saws over the little toe. So breathe, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, nice. So this is gonna give you flexibility through the back, through the hamstrings. It's giving you pelvic stability because your bottom is supposed to be staying on the floor. Don't let your bottom lift off the floor. Good, let's do one more to each side. And then let's have a little stretch. Reach down towards the feet. So if you can't reach the feet, just reach to wherever you feel comfortable. Nice. So we said we were gonna start each side, didn't we? So come back up. So if you went to your right last time, go to your left first, go to the opposite side, go. Good. So make that brain start to work that you don't wanna go to the same side first every time. Nice. So keep that bottom down. One more to each side. Good. Reach down to those toes again. Open out, lengthen and breathe. Nice work, everybody. Bring the feet together. Just let the knees open out. Let the pelvis open out. Open out. Lengthen through the back. Relax the shoulders back and down. You could hinge into the stretch from the hips if you want to, to give your back a bit of an extra stretch or to open out through the pelvis and the hips slightly more. Good. So we're going to finish with a little bit of stretching, stretching for the spine, stretching for the legs. If, however, you cannot do um, roll-ups, which is from lying down all the way up to touch the toes, you can stay sat here with the feet slightly apart, lengthen, keep the hands above the toes and just reach across and back. Reach across and back. So you're in a spine stretch. If you would like to challenge the abdominal muscles and think about um, working articulating through the spine then we're going to do a roll down you're going to come down to a full body stretch try and go down vertebrae by vertebrae tuck in the chin full body stretch now inhale exhale tuck your chin pull your tummy in bring yourself all the way up reach for the toes so again, articulate all the way down, tuck back chin, draw the tummy in, all the way down, tuck the chin, roll all the way up, reach. Nice, let's just do a couple more. So if you're doing this by yourself at any point, I would probably say just do between four to six. So we're doing four. We're going to do one more. Nice. Come all the way up. Ooh, reach for the toes and hold. So again, try to keep the back long. Open out through the chest. Relax through the shoulders. And release. So let's do some leg stretching. So let's lie on our back. So again, if you had a band and you wanted to use the band, you could use the band, but I'm not using a band today. So lengthen through that leg, hold a burble below your knee, gently pull in to lengthen through that hamstring. So keep this knee bent, I'm just showing you the lengthened leg. Don't lock out through your knee, keep the knee slightly soft. Relax the head, neck and shoulders down to the floor. You could flex through that foot, if you want to increase the stretch, you do not have to. So I would hold this stretch 
for about 20 to 30 seconds because it's a lengthening stretch through the hamstrings. We want the hamstrings to stay long and to lengthen. If you feel it easing at any point, you could pull into that stretch slightly more. And then relax that ankle over your knee. So flex your foot, which will support this knee. Take your hand round the foot, the leg that's on the floor. Lift your leg off the floor. So you're going to stretch into this outer thigh, into the abductor. So again, keep your head, neck and shoulders down and relaxed. So you're here. Good. So relax back down and let's go to the other side. So lift the other leg and lengthen. So again, soften through that knee, flex the foot only if you want to or relax. Lengthen down for that hamstring. Try to keep your bottoms grounded on the floor. So think about all that work you've done for um, stabilizing through the pelvis. You want that bottom to stay down. So again, this is a developmental stretch. So we want to hold each stretch for about 20, 30 seconds. You could hold it for longer if you want to. If you feel at ease, you can pull into it slightly more. So the older we get, the more we need to think about our stretching and our lengthening. So you can start to increase the stretches that you hold. Okay, so if you even wanted to, you could stay here for a couple of minutes holding this stretch. Don't feel that you can't hold your stretch to lengthen. So take your foot over your knee, flex your foot, lift the leg off the floor to open up through that abductor, through the glute. Try to keep this knee pushed forward so you're opening up for that pelvis through the hips. Good, and release. So just hug those knees in for a minute, just relax through your back. You could let the knees go side to side if you want to. You could open out through the arms, keep the shoulder blades down and let the knees go side to side to open out through the hips. And also by doing that, you're getting a length of stretch through that chest again to open out. So work again at your own level, how you feel most comfortable. And then relax. So bring yourself slowly up to sitting and let's just uncurl all the way up to standing. So coming up to standing. So again, if you wanted to, if you feel you want to, you could go back to that roll down a few times at the end. You could come here. You could let the arms relax, you could hold, you could lengthen through the legs. The hamstrings are probably feeling a bit lengthened now, not so tight. And then come all the way back up. Good. So let's do a quad stretch. So quad stretch, lift in one knee, bring the knees together, push your hips forwards. So you can hold the, the toes, you could hold just above the ankle, you could flex through the foot. Totally your choice, but those hips are level, your back is long, the abs are in. Now you're stretching through the quad. If you want to increase this hip flexor stretch a bit more, you could lean into your stretch, soften that supporting knee, and you'll get a longer stretch down through the quad. Nice work. So now come forward, lift your knee to your chest. So bring that knee up to the chest. So we're lengthening this supporting leg, lifting the knee, lengthen through that glute, lengthen through the back. Nice. Can we hold our foot? 
Can we lengthen the leg forwards? If you can't lengthen the leg forward, holding the foot, hold where you feel most comfortable. Flex that foot if you can. Woo -hoo. And let's finish with taking that ankle over the knee, open out through that knee, sit back and down. So again, work through that eye to clean. Nice work, everybody. I promise you very nearly finished. Come back up. Let's just walk it out. And let's do the other side. So quad stretch, knees together, hips push forwards. Hold wherever you feel most comfortable on your foot, either the toes or above the ankle, flex the foot. Or you could leave that foot pointed. If you want to increase that hip flexor stretch, let's lean. Nice. Reach. Beautiful. So we're increasing our balance awareness as well now. Good. Bring that knee to the chest. Lengthen through that supporting leg. And let's see if we can do the same on this foot. So remember, as I said, we've got one side that will always be easier than the other. So this is my weaker side, my tighter side. And bring that ankle over your knee. Sit back and down. Beats daytime TV, hey? <laughs> Good, so come back up. Just walk through the feet, relax off through the legs. Open out through the chest, take your hands into the small of your back or interlink the fingers, draw the shoulder blades back and down and open out through the chest. Reach the arms forward, open out through the shoulder blades, soften through the knees. And come back up. So take one arm across the chest and hold. Look over the shoulder of the arm that you are holding. And take the same arm up and down. Gently either hold here or you could take the hand in front of the elbow, but never hold your elbow, never hold your joints. Or you could take the hands together up the back to lengthen and stretch through the tricep. Good. Take the other arm across. Look over the shoulder. Take the arm up and down. Gently hold, hold or hold. So these are just maintenance stretches. So we're only going to hold for maybe 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds. Again, if you feel you want to hold them for longer, you can. But they're maintenance stretches just for the chest the back and the arms. Nice. Release off through the shoulders. Release off through the neck. So just take the ear to the shoulder and up, chin to chest. Gently looking up, back to centre. Look over the shoulder and back, over the shoulder and back. Well done. So that was Pilates for runners or hip stabilisation. You all worked extremely hard. Thank you for joining me on such a sunny, beautiful weekend. Stay home, stay safe. Bye bye for now. See you all later. Bye.